Now, one of the simplest gestures that we're able to do is the tap and hold. Uh, tap and hold is usually or very often used to display a context menu. Now, for this, we can use a mouse area or a tap handler, uh, and we can make use of the uh, press on hold and the on long press, depending on which one you use, to open it. And then we can use on release to close the context menu. Uh, swiping is another kind of gesture that we're commonly going to find when we're navigating a list or we're scrolling with that, that swooping kind of motion. Now, in order to swipe a list or even like an oversized image, uh, we need to make use of the flickable item. Now, list views and grid views are going to contain a flickable by default, which allows for the kinetic scrolling. So in our example that you see here, we have a flickable surface, which is uh, a, a part has a child, which is an image. We set the content width and the content height of our flickable to be the size of our image. And we've also set our bounds movement to stop at the bounds. And what that'll do is that makes it a hard stop at the bounds. Uh, by default, it'll flick a little bit past, uh, which I'll show you now an example of our swipe and um, what happens when we change the bounds. So right here, uh, again, we have basically what was in the example. Here's our image. It's in a flickable. The content width and height is set to that of the image, and we're stopping at the bounds. So when I run this, oh, sorry, I forgot to set the active one. When I run this now, we'll see when this comes up, I have a large image. Uh, which is right, which is this JPEG image here. Uh, this takes a minute because that is a large image and it is in the resource file. So it does pack that into the executable. Uh, so here's my large image. As I scroll about, I can't scroll to the left or to the top because I'm at the edge, but I can scroll right. I can scroll all you know different directions around here till I reach another edge. Uh, and this is a large image, so even when I make it full screen, I'm still able to scroll around here. Now, if we unset the bounds movement here, you'll see what happens by default, which is that little bit of push out. Uh, so we're able to pull a little bit from the corner as we're doing our flicking or when we reach one of the bounds. Y'all just bear with me for a moment while that builds. So now that we're at the we're at the corner, when I flick this way, notice how it just pulls away. Uh, so that's that's the difference between those two uh, bounds. Now, most of us have used pinching before in one way or another. Uh, usually, it's used to zoom in on something, uh, whether it's an image, a document, uh, maybe a maybe a part of a game. Uh, so QML provides us with a pinch area object that we can use to, to detect when a pinch gesture uh, has been started. Here's the basic setup of a pinch area. We have uh, a target. It is uh, filling its parent. It's pinch.target is gonna be its parent. So that means when the pinch is happening, it's gonna affect the parent. We set a minimum scale for this and a maximum scale so we could do the zooming. And also we set a uh, minimum maximum rotation. Now they're over uh, rotate, so you can rotate way past um, just 360, it won't just stop. And for an example of this, I have a simple pinch application here where we are simply have an image. This image is a little big, so I've scaled it to half its size. Uh, and then we just are, again, doing what was on the slide here. We're filling the parent, we're setting the pinch target, uh, and we're setting a minimum maximum scale and rotation. Now, when I run this application, I can't do it with a mouse, but as I pinch and I zoom in and out, it responds as you would expect. As I rotate, I'm able to rotate um, as well. And I can shrink it back down and the pinch works just as you would expect uh, for a pinch gesture. Now, there are some signals that we can use um, 
for different kinds of behavior here. So we might want to initialize some kind of property or start an animation when we start the pinch. For that, we can use on pinch started, uh, and then we can uh, pass the argument to determine if the pinch event is the one you're expecting or not. Um, we also can do update. Same kind of deal if you want to do something while they're updating. Uh, pinch finished, you can again maybe have an animation. Now, our pinch event has several properties, our point one and our point two, which is where our fingers are located. Uh, there is the center point. Of course, there's a rotation and scale. And then there's whether or not it's been accepted. And this is set false um, if, the, um, if you don't want pinch started to actually handle the gesture at all. Thanks for watching. If you want to learn more, please subscribe to our channel and check out the free QML programming course on our website. The link is in the description.